Good morning. Good morning. How did you sleep? That's what I'd like to know. How did I? Boy, I thought Brooklyn was noisy. Oh, the mail got in. Yes, uh, the boat arrived about an hour ago. Did my passport get here? Uh, sorry, yes, we'll probably be on the next boat. You mean I have to stick around this joint for another three weeks? It doesn't seem to be very much else you can do. Look, Simmons, you loan me enough money to get to Cape Town. I'll pay you back. Nothing doing. I've been rooked too many times by people who are going to pay me back. Do you mean to say I'm a crook? Certainly not. I'm merely saying I'm doing all I can for you. Yeah, a lot you're doing for me. Giving me my room and board to sing in this joint every night. You want to quit? You know I can't quit. You'll be an ivory trader come out of the jungles one of these days. With a craving for drink and entertainment. Your story about losing your passport and being stranded ought to be good for a touch. If he's drunk enough when you tell him. Now, wait a minute, Simmons. Of course, I mean a legitimate touch. Nothing unladylike. I get it. Boy, my mother told me to stay out of the theatrical business, and I wouldn't listen to her. So I wind up by being a bee girl in an African jungle. Boy, was she right. Who's the lady? She's no lady. She's a singer. American. Stranded up colony when her manager skipped out on her. Landed here penniless and I took her in. <laughs> Big hearted, ain't you? Good morning, Miss Brooks. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, Simmons. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Uh, care to look over the times or the latest war news? It's only two months old. Uh, there's uh, a letter for you, Mr. Grossman. Hmm? Mm, yes, something to worry about. It seems we're about to have a visitor from the British intelligence. British intelligence? A fellow named Hobson. And does it say when he'll get here? Yes, he should arrive late this afternoon. Does he uh, know about us? Probably trying to find out. What else should bring him here? Gentlemen, this is where I wash my hands of the whole affair. I can't afford... You can afford to be quiet. Has the girl's passport arrived? Yes. But I didn't give it to her. Good. I'll take care of it for her. Ah, boxcars are win again. Shower down, little lambs. I'll shoot it off. <laughs> Boys, I'm lucky. Come on, guys. Do like you used to do on Lennox Avenue. Mm -hmm. Snake eyes again. <laughs> now, ain't that something? Harlem never was like this. I'll say it wasn't. You ever shot a pair of aces in Harlem and reach for the money, you'd get your arm cut off. I beg your pardon, ma'am? You heard me. What are you doing, making up your own rules? You see, we're playing a different kind of game than regular dice. I can see that. You ought to be ashamed of yourself cheating those poor safari boys. I is ashamed, ma'am. Honest, I is. But don't tell them boys, because I want to keep on living till I get back to good old USA. I heard you speak of Harlem. What are you doing in Africa? Uh, my name is Jefferson Jones. I'm Mr. Larry Mason, gentlemen, gentlemen. We about to go trekking out here into the jungle looking for buried cities and bones. You see, Mr. Larry, he's a paleon or something like that. Paleontologist? That's it. He's a digger-upper. He's looking for the bones of a fellow who died a long time ago. They call him uh, Miss Lynx. Is he an American? Who, this Lynx fellow? No, no. Your boss. He sure is. Where is he? Oh, he's in there. Thanks. All right, boys. Come on now, let's resume our instructions. Shoot it, come on, get on it. Hello, Mr. Mason. Huh? Oh. Hello. How's the bone hunting business? Well, don't look so surprised. I'm not going to bite you. Say, how do you happen to know my name and my profession? Well, I could tell you. I got it from the jungle grapevine, but I won't. 
You see, I was talking to your loyal servant, and he told me all about you. I see. Well, I thought maybe you'd be glad to see a fellow American in this forsaken place, but I can see now that I was wrong. Forget it. Uh, just a moment. I'm sorry if I was rude, but you see, running into a girl out here in the jungle sort of flustered me for a moment. Won't you sit down? Thanks, Professor. I'm not a professor. Well, pardon me. Who is the stranger? He's an American scientist. Better break it up. Good morning, Mr. Mason. I'm Simmons, owner of this establishment. How do you do? Uh, may I have a word with you a moment? Purely routine, excavation permit, hunting license, that sort of thing. Why, certainly. I'm sure the lady will excuse you. Uh, this way. Excuse me. I'm sure you'll find everything in order. Forget it, Mr. Mason. I know your credentials are all right. I called you in here to warn you. Warn me? Yes. I imagine you're new to this country, and I don't like to see you taken in. The young lady at the bar will probably tell you she's from Brooklyn. Actually, she was born in Cape Colony. I'm afraid I don't understand. What I'm trying to say is, don't be taken in by any cock and bull story she may tell you. Particularly if it concerns cash. Oh, I see. Well, thanks for the warning. Don't mention it. I'm sorry, but I'll have to leave you. Well, wait a minute, Professor. I've got something to talk to you about. Yes? You see, I'm stranded here without a passport. And I thought, maybe you being a fellow American, you'd loan me enough money to get to Cape Town. Well, I'd pay it back to you as soon as I cable New York. A very touching story, but scarcely good enough for a touch. What do you mean? Simply this. I realize that my academic pursuits might lead one to believe that I'm pretty fair game for a woman of your type. But as they say in American slang, I'm the kind of a sucker that gets an even break. Oh, wait a minute, Professor. You've got it all wrong. I'm not trying to clip you honest, I'm not. Whatever it is you want, you won't get it from me. And I'm not a professor. I'll say you're not. Okay, Jeff, we're on our way. Yes, sir. Where'd you get all that money? Mr. Larry, this is what I call the golden fleece from my own little private lamp. Taking the boys again, huh? Doesn't your conscience ever hurt you? It sure does. The remorse just streams off of me every time I throw a natural. Yeah? Well, pull your flock together and let's get rolling. Yes, sir. All right, come on, you little lambs. We're moving on to New Pastor. That's fine, Mr. Hobson. We do our very best to make your stay comfortable. Thank you. That stranger that just came in, see him? Sing for him, nice and pretty. What is he, an ivory trader? No, but he's important. Oh. 
What's wrong? Make way here, make way. One, One side, please. One side. That's right. What's happened? Somebody knifed him. The girl was singing, standing right opposite this man. All at once, he started fighting with the waiter, and then the lights went out. Was it this man? No. Where's the other waiter? He's probably in the kitchen. Take a look, constable. Yes, sir. This is bad. Where's the girl who was singing? She probably saw the whole thing. I imagine she's in her room. There's no one in the kitchen, sir. Show me her room. This way, sir. Well, she's not here. Here, hold this. Don't do that, Mr. Larry. You know I can't stand has been. They won't hurt you. Maybe you think so, but them boys over there think's different. And I ain't far behind them. They're just worried about those drums. Come to think about it, they are pretty creepy. They ain't just the drums that worry them and got them scared. It's them bones that you fiddling with. Nonsense. Well, that's one way to put it. But them boys figure that them bones was walking around here once. And the folks that was wearing them don't like what you're doing to them no how. One now. What is it, Bongo? This bad place, no stay. Uh, you go back and tell the boys not to worry. I'll protect them. We stay here. No, Bona. Bad medicine. Bring juju. You hear? Oh, that's just the jungle telegraph, Bongo. No, Bona. Evil spirit. Juju. Will you and the boys stay if I hide the bad medicine? Put them back in the ground where I found them? Yes, Bona. Very well. I'll put them back. Buena. Okay, Jeff, I guess you're elected. You heard what I said. Oh, Mr. Larry, you ain't intimating that I've been elected to be no grave digger, is you? I certainly am. Somebody's got to bury him. Why me? I'll be in one of them holes soon enough without staging no preview. Now, oh, Jeff, come on. Stop complaining and get busy. Oh, Mr. Larry, look, why don't you let one of them native citizens do the digging and just let me alone, see, because I'm a tourist. You know how those superstitious natives are. They're afraid of the dead. And I ain't, huh? I know, of course not. You're civilized. Maybe you think so. But I got a hunch there's a powerful lot of throwback in me. Well, if you get scared, just sing. Knowing your voice, I think that'll keep the spirits away. Yeah, it even keep me away. Oh, uh, look, Mr. Larry, can't I... Stop fuming, Jeff, and get busy, will you? All right, Mr. Larry, you the boss. I'll do it, but it's against my better judgment. I'm warning you, if I go away from here, don't come back. And you meet up with a cannibal with a wishbone in his nose, just walk up and say, good evening, Jeff. Because that's apt to be me, yours truly. This ain't no job for a man who's got ideas. If them bones is handed, the sooner that they is reburied is the better.
Now settle down, Hans. Settle down, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Anything what once was, it ain't no more, can't hurt nobody. At least, that's what Mr. Larry said. Them feet are poaching, or my name ain't Jeff. Sing, brother. If singing keeps the spirits away, sing like you never sung before. I'm going to bury these bones. I'm going to bury these bones. I'm going to put these bones to the rest. I'm going to bury these bones. I'm going to bury these bones. I'm going to put these bones to rest. Jeff! Let me out of here! Let me out of here! Jeff! Let me out of here! Get away, son. I done had all the traffic with bones I can stand. What's the matter, Jeff? Oh, Mr. Larry, the hands is after me. They is after me. What? That's the facts. A lady goes. She hollered at me. Oh, you've been hearing things, Jeff. No, I ain't. I heard it with my own ears. She called me by my name. Where'd you hear all this? Back there in the jungles. And she come back looking for her skeleton. Well, come on. We'll go see about this lady ghost of yours. <laughs> That's her. Gee, Professor, that was wonderful. My stomach was beginning to think I didn't have a mouth. Glad you enjoyed it. Enjoyed it? Boy, the Waldorf is never like this. Now, look, Miss... Uh... Now, the name is Brooks. Nona Brooks. How do you do? As I was about to say, Miss Brooks, there's a limit to my patience. What are you doing here, and what is it you want this time? Well, I didn't come for money again, if that's what you think. Well, that's something. What is it, then? Well, Professor, it's a long story. You see, I was simply singing a song, minding my own business, when all of a sudden a fellow was killed. I had to scram, that's all. You killed a man? No, Professor. I'm not the killer type. Then why did you run away? Well, it's all very simple. A couple of months ago, my passport was either stolen or lost, and so I headed for the coast. I got as far as Dewaqua, and I ran fresh out of money. So I'd stay there until I tried to get a new passport, that's all. I was told by Mr. Simmons that you were born in Cape Colony. Oh, I don't care what Simmons said. I was born in Brooklyn. What are your plans? Well, I haven't any. All I know is that I'm here, and I'm very grateful for your hospitality. But you can't possibly travel with me. This is purely a scientific expedition. Well, couldn't I be a guinea pig or something? I'd even work. There's no place for a woman in my scheme of things. In fact, you would be nothing but a nuisance. On the other hand, I... I can't very well cast you adrift in that jungle again. Thanks, Professor. I knew you were a noble soul the minute I set eyes on you. Not at all. I'm merely meeting eventualities. You see, Miss Brooks, I am a, I'm a very practical man. So what? You're practical. But what does your practical mind say you're going to do with me? You can spend the night, of course. Thanks. First thing in the morning, I'm sending you back where you came from. You, Simmons. What kept you so long? I was delayed in town. I had a difficult time getting here when I did. The police held me for questioning. Do you think they suspect anything? Not yet. They're satisfied the waiter knifed him. But they want to know who paid him to do it. Were you able to get to the waiter? Yes. Well, where are the papers? This should amuse you, gentlemen. He hid them in the girl's jacket. Of all the fool tricks. Did you get them away from her? Well, hardly. She skipped out right after the murder. She couldn't have gone very far alone. Come on, we're going after her. Oh, no. My job ends here. I've got to get back to town before the police find I've gone. Suit yourself. Back up, we're moving on. Not so fast, Grossman. What about the payoff we talked about? I'll have our agent send it to you as soon as we get back to Duwakwa. Oh, no. I only work one way, for cash. 100 pounds. Aren't you being a little unreasonable? I don't intend to argue with you. 
You owe me a hundred pounds and I want it. But that's a lot of money to pay in a lump sum. Sure it is. But I know where I could get a lot more if I wanted to tell the right parties how you were stirring up trouble with the tribes. The mention is gefährlich. What would you machen? It's all. Good. Very well. Here's your money. That's more like it. Now, if you don't mind, I'll just take a handful of supplies and be on my way. Help yourself. Don't y'all know this ain't no time for no serenading? We no sleep. We drive out evil spirit. White woman, bad juju. Tomorrow we go back to Aqua. Says who? We says. No, you don't, cause I ain't gonna let you. Uh, On second thought, I think I better discuss it with Mr. Larry. If you'll pardon me, boys. Boy, why did I ever leave Harlem? What's the matter? It's Miss Nona. Them boys say they're going back to Dewaka in the morning. They think that she's an evil spirit. Oh, is that all? Well, you go back and tell the boys they won't have to leave. If that's what they're afraid of, they'll be safer here, because Miss Brooks is going back to Dewaka in the morning. Can I wait till in the morning to tell them that? You better go tell them now before they get all upset. Uh, Mr. Larry, if I could make a suggestion, don't you think you pack more authorities? No, now, what's the matter? I thought you had a meeting out of your hand. You're not frightened, are you? Well, if I ain't, I'm the next thing to it. Now, Jeff, you don't want to lose face in front of a lot of uneducated, superstitious natives, do you? You go back and tell them that Miss Brooks is leaving in the morning. I'll go, Mr. Larry, but I'm a conscientious objector. Who's leaving in the morning? You are. Oh. Well? Well what? Well, aren't you going to ask me to sit down, or is chivalry a dead issue with archaeologists? Excuse me. Won't you sit down? Thanks. Are you cold? No, why? I just wondered. Isn't it wonderful out here in the jungle at night alone? Yes, it is nice. It's so much more quiet and peaceful in that stuffy hotel in Duaqua. That so? Mm-hmm. Do you mind if I take my coat off? It's rather warm. Whew. That's better. Well, I'd better be turning in. I've, it... Oh, so soon? Well, really, I've, I've got a busy day ahead of me tomorrow, you know, sending you back to town and all, and... Oh, please stay a while. It's the least you can do for me on my last night here. I know, but it's... Uh, what, it... Oh, please talk to me. About what? Oh, anything. Don't you ever get lonesome for someone to talk to out here at night? Sometimes, but not tonight. Okay. Then I'll talk to you. Are you always this persistent? No. Only when there's a moon like that one. What's the moon got to do with it? What kind of a man are you? What do you mean, what kind of a man am I? Well, isn't there any romance in you whatsoever? Or is your mind so cluttered up with books and bones and stuff that you, you don't even know there's a moon? Anybody knows there's a moon. <laughs> That's it. Anybody knows there's a moon. You know, you could be human if you'd only let yourself go. I'm just as human as the next man. Oh, relax. Just pretend I'm a skeleton or something. That ought to make you feel at home. 
Isn't that more comfortable? Hmm? Yes. You see, you are human after all. Well, I got to be turning in. I, uh, uh, good night. And you're going back tomorrow regardless. sort of camp a lone man would make. Do you suppose Simmons had a rendezvous here with someone? Brother, Warner. Why, it's Simmons. He's been shot. Get some water. Much you pacey. Thanks. Who shot you? Grossman. Melts. Grossman and Belts? Why should they want to shoot you? If I didn't know them, Brooks. She has the records. It will explain everything. You know, I've been thinking over what you said last night, and you're right. I can't send you back to Duakwa. You've had enough trouble already. Why, Professor, you have a heart after all. What I'm going to do is give you a couple of my best boys and send you up the coast to Liberia. You'll be safe there. Well, I've got to get busy. Thanks for fixing breakfast, Miss Brooks, and I... Uh, oh, I'm now, wait a minute, Professor. I just can't rush off like this without talking to you. About what? Well, about your work. It seems so fascinating, those bones and everything. It must be very important. I'd like to know more about it before I leave here. And tell me, are you doing well here? Exceptionally. You know, from the appearance of those specimens I found yesterday, I wouldn't be at all surprised if I were on the verge of a very important discovery. Really? Yes. Supposing you make this very important discovery, then what? What do you mean? Well, supposing you do discover somebody's lost shin bone or whatever it is, then what have you got? What have I got? Yes, suppose you tell me. Miss Brooks, do you realize that for years, scientists have been seeking definite proof that man descended from the anthropoid ape? You've got no argument with me there, brother. The thing I can't understand is why you come all the way to Africa to prove it. Well, I had an agent once on Broadway that was proof enough for me. He's the ape that sent me on this tour. Wanna, 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 white men come with guns. Uh, if you don't mind, I think I'll duck inside till they've gone. Well, why do that? It's probably nothing but a couple of ivory hunters. <laughs> I know, but uh, nevertheless, I think I'll avoid meeting them personally. And look, Professor, uh, I'm not a criminal, so you can use your own judgment about turning me in if it's the law. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Dr. Claude Searle is my name. This is my colleague, Dr. Stephen. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, I hope you don't mind the intrusion. Oh, not at all. My name is Lawrence Mason. Glad to know you, Mr. Mason. Dr. Stephan? Glad to know you. Oh, uh, would you care for some coffee? Uh, no, thanks. Uh, I take it you're on a big game hunt. Uh, no, uh, as a matter of fact, we're hunting for a girl, a victim of amnesia. A girl? Out here in the jungle? Yes, a rather unfortunate case. Uh, she was under my care until a few days ago in Duwakwa. Then one night she wandered off into the jungle and we've been looking for her ever since. Hmm. Amnesia does funny things to people, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Have you seen a girl who answers a description, Mr. Mason? I'm sorry, but I can't help you. Uh, who is your companion, Mr. Mason? Well, my, uh, my companion? Yes, sir. The table is set for two. You were eating breakfast with someone just before we arrived. Who was it? What business is it of yours? Suppose we drop this. I'm an officer of the law, and I'm looking for a girl who is wanted in connection with the murder of a British intelligence officer. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place instead of beating around the bush? Come on, we'll set the camp. Just a moment. May I see your credentials? We don't need to show any credentials. You'll show them before you search this place. Bongo? Aiding and abetting a criminal is a serious offense. And so is impersonating an officer. Get out. Very well, Mr. Mason. 
But don't delude yourself. We'll be back. Come on. Boss, you was magnificent. I'll say it was. White Miss Gwenda, white man Coogee. Tracks there pretty soon. Grossman belts. They're after the Brooks girl. And if we make time, we might be able to catch them by nightfall. But Mr. Lawrence, how much more does rock even as we got to do? I'm so hot, I'm about to blow a few. <laughs> we'll be through in a bit. Why don't you go down to the river and take a swim and cool off? Who, me? No, sir. I ain't so hot that I want to be no blue plate special or no crocodile. <laughs> you really take your work seriously, don't you? I do when I think I'm on to something. Quite important, huh? I think so. It must be to make a man like you forget. How do you mean? Well, you were going to send me away this morning, remember? Oh, oh, that. You could have handed me over to those men and been done with it. Well, I, uh, I didn't like their looks. Oh. And as for the other, well, there's plenty of time for that. Buena. Yes, Bongo? White man come. What, again? Uh-oh. Here's where I take another powder. Hold the fort, Professor. Good morning, sir. I'm Sergeant Burke of the Colonial Constabulary. This is uh, Constable Whiteside. I know. And you're looking for a beautiful young woman who is a victim of amnesia. All right, now that I know your story, get out. I beg your pardon? You heard what I said. Clear out. This is most impertinent. Do you realize who you're talking to? Yes, a couple of phonies. Phonies? Why, the man's insane. If you mean I'm mad, you're quite right. Good and mad. And just a little sick of being pestered by every would-be cop that comes along. Would-be cop? Bongo. Now, if you don't mind, you'll leave my camp before I throw you out. Bongo, see that these gentlemen leave at once. You go! Very well. But you haven't heard the last of this young fellow. <laughs> Mr. Larry, that's the prettiest piece of evicting I ever did see. Where were you? Uh, oh, I was wreck uh, nothing around. Where? Uh, behind the tree. Thanks again, Professor. Oh, it was nothing at all. I'm just becoming annoyed with these imposters coming around trying to take advantage of me, that's all. Uh, Professor. Yes? Uh, I know this is going to upset you, but they weren't imposters. What? They were real cops from Duaqua. You mean... And you let me throw them out? Well, I was too scared to think. What do we do now? Well, there's only one thing to do, and that's to pack up and get out of here as quick as we can. Come on. You know you're slowing up progress. Oh, I can't help it. My feet are killing me. Look, Professor, let's go back to Duaqua and face the music. We'll do nothing of the kind. I'm not going to have my career ruined by a jail sentence just because you happen to come along. I didn't ask you on this safari, but now that you're here, you'll have to cooperate until we're out of this country. Okay, Mr. Legree. I'll try. Is Chief Mojobo here? No. Don't go away. Come back tomorrow. Never mind. We've already spoken to your chief. We're British officers. We need the help of your warriors. Bosh! Bosh, Bibi! Nina Bia! Nchawi! Nzungu! Kopenga!
That's the one on my bed. Bongo, what's the trouble here? Boys, red one, Juju come. I told you before, those drums don't mean anything. No, Buana. Juju. Boys say white woman bring evil spirit. They go back. Oh, so that's it. Look, Bongo. You tell your boys if they go back, they meet great danger. Tell them white woman is good spirit. She has come to lead them safely through the jungle. Etu kichawi bayasana. Wow, sema wongo. Wow, shati kataroho. Kuua ayona manu a mesa ve moyo komishu kitu kilemwa. They go now, Bwana. Good, Bongo. Good. Brother, have you got a line? Well, let's hope it works. These natives aren't stupid. They can smell trouble a hundred miles away. Well, let's get going. Fancy! Fancy! What do we do? I'm scared. We got to get out of here. Oh, wait for me, house coming. Give me a hopper. Come down. Come down. Come on, 
now grab hold. Oh. There you are. Thanks, Mr. Larry. You sure saved me from being crocodile food. Hey, look. Isn't that a cave over there? Hey, maybe we'll be safe there. Come on, let's see. You all better watch going through this thing. Take it easy, Mal. Moses, this ain't no cave. Why, this is a subway graveyard. Mr. Larry, we got to find some other place to hold up. I think not. We'll be safe here for the time being. Now, that's a point for conjecture. Hmm. This looks interesting. Skull of a woman that died about 500 years ago, I'd say. Now, wait a minute, Professor. There's plenty of time for exploring when the heat's off. Maybe you're right. Hey, what's this? Oh, well, that's funny. Well, it looks like an official document of some kind. It is. It's the report of a British intelligence agent named uh, Hobson. Hmm, about a plot to start an uprising among the natives. Hey, listen to this. Grossman is the leader. His assistant's name is Belts. Simmons, the proprietor of the Trader Hotel in Duaqua, is their contact man. All are foreign agents. Simmons? Yeah. Well, that's the man I work for. That explains why everybody's been after me. But how did this report get in the lining of your jacket? Well, I don't know. But you can bet your bottom dollar that Grossman and Belts know how it got there. I think you're right. We're going to start back to Duaco in the morning. The authorities will clear this up in no time. And I can continue with my explorations on Hamburg, and you can go back to Brooklyn. In the meantime, I think I'll hide this, just on the chance that Grossman and Belts happen to find us. They would never kill us if they couldn't find the document. I imagine it'll be safe here. If it was me searching, it would stay there till doomsday.
he's dead. Are you sure? Certainly. He's moving. That's reflex action, that's all. Let's get out of here. Mr. Larry, you sure did save my life. I never felt more like a gone goblin in all my born days. I didn't feel so good myself. Oh, and neither did I. Well, at least we're safe now. Yeah. Oh, no, we ain't. Have you decided to listen to reason and tell us where you hid the document we want? The answer is still no. You're being very foolish. I think not. You won't harm us as long as you can't find the report. Miss Brooks, I could simplify matters for you if you care to cooperate. I have your passport here. With it, you can get out of this country quickly and safely. So you're the one that's been holding things up. Well, you can keep right on holding, because I'm not saying a word. Perhaps we can find a way to make you talk. You're bluffing. As soon as one of my safari boys gets back to Duwakwa with news of this attack, there'll be a small army on your trail. I don't believe any of your safari boys live to reach Duwakwa. Besides, unless you decide to talk very soon, you might not be here to welcome your rescuers, even if they should come. Nice going. But well, where's we going? Uh, Mr. Larry, I got a feeling that we're going to wind up being a scrub. Just like that, if we don't get out of here quick. I ain't got no desire to be in a square meal for one of them cannibals. That's nonsense, Jeff. These natives aren't cannibals. Oh, yes, it is. Look at that. They got a kettle out there big enough to fricassee us all. You think they are cannibals? Even if they are, they wouldn't dare do that to white people. Yeah, but maybe they want some dark meat. Watch out, boy, here. on you, woman. What's so funny? You ain't no Maxine Sullivan yourself. <laughs> Mr. Larry, I got it. This she-male cannibal is trying to see if I'm young and tender. Mr. Larry, we is going to get it. <laughs> oh, get away, woman. I'm old and tough. Well, you got her all wrong, Jeff. She's only trying to show you she's fond of you. You mean that this jungle female is trying to romance me? I believe she is. What do you think? I think she's absolutely fascinated. Okay, hold on. <laughs> oh, Mr. Larry, I still say she sized me up for a pot roast. <laughs> Don't get personal. You is a regular African explorer. <laughs> I've got an idea. Play up to her, Jeff. Maybe she can get you out of here. And if you do, maybe you can help us. You mean that I got to reciprocate the affection of this female mountain? Oh, boss, you is asking too much. But you've got to. It's our only chance for escape. <laughs> kibi kibi. <laughs> kibi kibi. You saying kibi kibi, but you is giving me the heebie jeebies and in spades. You've got to make the sacrifice, Jeff. Chuck her under the chin. Smile at her. Don't repulse her. All right, boss, I'll do it. But if I get in trouble, you got to rescue me. <laughs> Uchi <-kuchi. laughs> A little lump of blubber. <laughs> come on, come on. Ulu Cool is right, because I sure ain't getting any warmer. Jeff, see if you can make her understand that you want to get out of here. Oh, out, out of here, huh? Me, Jeff. Jeff, you understand? <laughs> Jeff? Mm -hmm. You got that much right. You see, Jeff, I want to scramble over the fence of ruler. You understand? Do you copy here? Want a scramble? Mm hmm. Magic scramble? Uh huh. Don't I have a hole? <laughs> well, what did I say to her then? Let's go here. Oklahoma. Says which? Uge, Uge, Mola. She wants you to put the robe on. You know, I believe she's got a plan to get you out of here. Well, get me dressed for a barbecue. Well, oh, come on, Jeff, put it on. Hey, what's that there? That's a witch doctor's headdress. You know, I think she's going to help him escape. You're right. Let her put it on, Jeff. These natives won't molest you. They think you're a witch doctor. Watch for your chance to escape and follow the trail back home. You'll probably run into those two officers looking for us. I'll do that, but don't y'all eat nothing while I'm gone. Because it's liable to be a Harlem stew. Yeah, how is that? Scrambola! Manit! 
Uh, see you later, Mr. Larry and Miss Norton. I hope. I suspect that's an invitation, but I decline with gratitude. Out of my way, big boy. Don't you see I was a witch doctor? Trombone solo, my G. I ain't never played a trombone in my life, big boy. Hey, X make pointing them hat pins in my way. I'm doing a scrambola. Elite Majola. Hey, take it easy, y'all. I'm sensitive. Elite Majola. Oh, my goodness. Hola, moho. Hola, moho, alit, mohoko. I didn't know such a thing. I was walking along there, tending to my own business. Ouch! Rack a sack a sack, two for a nick. Oh, I say, would you mind repeating that? And take off that beastly disguise. It takes me. Was you saying something to me in English? Positively. I merely asked you to repeat the statement you made a moment ago. Oh, then you're an educated African, huh? Yeah, definitely. A, B, P, H, D, L, L, D. Oxford, you know. Is that so? Before I started working for Mr. Larry, I was WPA. But you haven't answered my question. Rack a sack a sack, two for a nip. Uh, that's the past word of my lodge over there in Harlem. Uh, the son of ancient Africans. I use the word sometime, you know, just to keep him cussing. Rack a sack a sack a? Jubilo. Come again? Uh, my dear fellow, I was merely trying to give you the response uh, to, to our secret order's password. Uh, Raka Saka Saka, Jubilo. Well, look a here, large brother. <laughs> My name's Jeff Jones. I am Chief Majovo, Grand Imperial Potentate of the Mother Chapter of our Great Order. Now, if you had mastered your ritual, you should know that our organization originated right here in my province. Chief T, I'm flabbergasted. <laughs> Why are you giving me a signal of distress? As a brother, I need help. I'm in danger. Oh, nonsense, nonsense. On the contrary, with me, you're perfectly safe. Maybe I is, but Mr. Larry Mason, my boss, and Miss Nona ain't. Them two spies down there trying to kill them both. Spies? What spies? Them two fellas that brought us up here. Oh, you must be mistaken. Those men are government agents. Yeah, but they're working for the wrong government. You ask Mr. Larry, he'll tell you about it. Olga, Majita, Majit, Oi! Oi! I have sent for your employer and the girl. Uh, please relax. I'll sit down, but I won't relax till I get back to Harlem. Uh, look here. Uh, how about a little African golf? I shoot a shilling. Well, yeah. shoot. Uh -huh. Box cars, I win. <laughs> ah, ah. Hey, what you hitting me with that thing? My dear fellow. The rules of dice were made many, many centuries ago. In fact, uh, one of my ancestors on my father's side helped to formulate them. Do, uh, do you wish to continue? Oh, you know the rules. Perfectly. Then ain't no use of me and you going no further. Please be seated. Uh, I have sent for you so that I might uh, interrogate you regarding an assertion made by your servant. Uh, I'm not Mr. Larry's servant. I'm his personal gentleman gentleman. My error. Sorry. He tells me that uh, you have proof that Mr. Grossman and Mr. Belts are foreign agents. Is this correct? How do I know I can trust you? Oh, you can trust him, Mr. Larry. Me and him is large brothers. I pledge you my word, if you produce such proof, you shall go free. And Grossman and Belts will be turned over to the proper authorities. Der Häuptling musste sie herausgelassen machen. Schauen wir nach. Uh, you say that Tony Hobson's report stated that Grossman and Belts were conspiring to foment an uprising among the tribes? That's why Hobson was murdered. That's why they're so anxious to get a hold of that report now. Poor Tony. He and I were classmates at Oxford. What's going on here? Grave charges have been made against you, gentlemen. 
I fear I shall have to place you into custody until Mr. Mason has an opportunity to produce documentary proof he claims to have in his possession. I shall also send a runner to Drakwa immediately to advise the authorities to apprehend Simmons. You're not placing anyone into custody. We're taking these prisoners with us. Chief, don't you see me wigwagging you to distress sign? I'm sorry, old chap. I'm helpless at the moment. These blackguards seem to have the upper hand. You're an intelligent man. Thank you. You'll walk ahead of us. Keep an eye to the rear and shoot anyone who tries to interfere. Get started. Okay, hey, my hoona, I leave. Boga bola mahuna ali. You're a very brave man, Mr. Mason, but a very impetuous one. But they would have murdered us. Oh, no. I would never have permitted that. My warriors would have eliminated them before they were out of sight of the village. This way, the government will be put to all of the fuss and bother of a trial before they're executed. Chieftain, you sure is some large brother. Thanks, Brother Jones. Uh, by the way, Chieftain, what does scrambola mean in your language? Why, it's a proposal of marriage. Hmm? It is? Yes. Oh, by the by, my little sister informed me that you've tendered such a proposal to her. I want you to know that I shall be very, very happy to have you as a brother-in-law. Uh, here comes my little sister now. <laughs> kibi, kibi. Uh-oh. Kibi, kibi. <laughs> Scrambola. Scrambola. If you do, you got to catch me. Kibi, kibi. Kibi, kibi. Scrambola. 